have a picture. Well, we have some pictures now of, uh, of breasts like Leslie's, right? Right. This is not okay. Leslie. It's, right. it's an example of what happens after multiple births and also after weight loss mm -hmm. where there is a drooping of the breast as well as flattening. And many women who are older uh, have this condition and they usually come in and we can do a breast lift to mm -hmm. bring the nipple up to the proper position and also give the fullness by placing an implant. What kind of materials will you be using? Well, if you uh, will do in a case like um, uh, Leslie's, for example, where you would do a skin tightening procedure as well as a nipple um, lift, uh, you will have an incision underneath the breast. That's for an uplift. Uh, for an yeah. uplift. So I'm using the same incision, and at that point I can use a silicone type implant, um, which is just inserted. The word silicone scares a lot of people. That's right. So you said silicone-like. This is not silicone? No, this is a silicone, but it is uh, semi-solid. You know, it, it is uh, liquidy, and it is in an envelope, so it does not uh, leak. Mm -hmm. And uh, you put this in under the muscle. You do not put it under the breast tissue. It's very important, because if you put it under the muscle, it maintains its firmness because the muscle does not droop and the muscle stays on top of the implant so even if you get the hardening that everybody worries about mm -hmm. the hardening after um, an implant mm -hmm. because you have the muscle over it you really don't feel it even if you should get it so the incidence of the hardening that people always talk about mm -hmm. and know about is really down Plus, it does not interfere with any breast cancer detection test that you may want to take yeah, afterwards. Good. Well, what let me about ask you breast one thing. feeding, though? You know, no, it has shouldn't. nothing to do with it. Go ahead, Nothing Jill. to do with it? Right. It has nothing to do with breastfeeding. You don't have to wear a bra if you don't want to. You won't, your breasts will never sag. You'll never, uh, you don't have to worry about breastfeeding or breast cancer. Can I just get it straight? The breast is on top of the breast muscle. And now you've got to put that under the breast mm -hmm. muscle. Mm -hmm. So In that pushes out right. the whole breast. In other words, you have a rib cage. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then you have the pecs that yeah. everybody when they exercise, yes. they get pecs. On top of the pecs, you have breast tissue, right. and then you have your skin, right. and the nipple areola. Okay, where is that gonna go? Under the Under muscle. Under the muscle. Hmm. So, so it that pushes out the whole... The uh -huh. muscle yeah. and the breast. It okay. does not go under the breast. So the muscle still stays attached, uh -huh. and the muscle is the bra. Mm -hmm. So you do not really feel that hardening as much, mm -hmm. and uh, the muscle by movement massages it, and uh, it maintains the softness, and it does not pull the skin of the breast down, so you should get, with the heaviness, more droop. Right. Yeah, so it's a good method to do, but and that's only done uh, in cases like Leslie's, where you would ha or in cases of women who have a breast droop mm -hmm. and uh, atrophy or uh, loss of breast tissue. And that's what uh, Leslie's problem is, and that's how she's going to correct it. Now, in a moment, we'll come back and we'll talk about Jill and uh, find out what her problem is and how we're going to solve that, too. Okay, mm -hmm. right back in just a minute. Mm -hmm. We're back now with uh, our segment on breast augmentation. We uh, have gotten up to um, Jill Herzog, and we're going to find out what it is that she'd like done. Well, I'm going to go up two bra sizes. I've decided to do this because I've lived with this all my life, and... Every time, every year when I go on vacation, when I get home from vacation, I always see the pictures and I have a beautiful body, except there's not much happening up here mm -hmm. to offset my beautiful shape down here. I see. So now but you are beautiful. Fine. Even you will agree to that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, she likes the way she oh, looks, except for and that. And she's trying to improve it and there's nothing wrong That's in that. right. Yes. So now I want, to, I want to get rid of the ruffle top bathing suits. I want to be able to wear off-the-shoulder dresses. Yeah. And be able to show up a little oh, bit. Oh, good for you. All is right. Is that the right reason, doctor? I mean, I know you give a psychological study. Right. You know, when a patient comes in for any reason, for any surgery, you want to know are they realistic? Mm -hmm. What do they really want? Do they know what they can achieve? And um, are they uh, mature enough about it? Um, so uh, le both Leslie and Jill are great because they know exactly what they want and they're doing it for themselves. Yeah, I admire people like that who uh -huh. know exactly, exactly what, they, what want they want and they're not afraid to go right. out and get it. Now, let's take a look at Jill's breasts and, and um, this is what they look like and, and next week when she comes back we'll show you the after pictures but that's, you look okay to me, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind the pop? 
personal observation. Well, most people think so, but well, you know, most we... people think so. <laughs> Jill's an interesting woman. <laughs> We're talking about balance, though. You right. know, if a woman's wanna... hips are a little bit wider, then yeah. more on top makes you feel a little bit more. Right. What's the word? I uh, have in proportion. A, right, a more in proportion figure. All right, but well, what are the dangers? Certainly, there's got to be some. Okay, let me just tell you, in Jill's case, what uh, the implant uh, that she's going to have, I go through the armpit, so there are no scars on the chest, because she doesn't need an uplift. She's perfectly fine. All she needs is volume. I go under the armpit, leaves no scars. Uh, it's a small incision, and I put in an empty bag, uh, which I fill in uh, while it's already in. So the incision is very, very small. You what just do you push fill it with? with? with uh, saline water, salt water, salt water, which is natural in which your body. Which is natural in your body. So should it leak, should there be a big impact or whatever, it's water. You can just take the bag out and put another one in with uh, What are with the chances saline. of that happening? High collision accidents, a penetrating injury uh, to the chest. It has to be a high speed. Uh, they won't um, just all of a sudden one day go flat? Well, again, <laughs> it could. I hope it not. could. <laughs> it could because these are all factory made yeah. and if the valve in it uh, is not sealed correctly, which we always test in the operating room, but if the seal goes, you could, you could deflate. Oh. And then you come in and no. you just take it out and put another but one she's in. she's a young girl here. I mean, she's in her 20s. Is this really going to last for the rest of her life? Why not? And if I'll it doesn't, I'll go back and see the doctor. Mm. Okay. There should be no reason, but again, it goes under the muscle, through the armpit, there are no scars on the chest. I do not like going through the nipple areola because I don't like going through the breast tissue. I don't and also for sensitivity, I would think. Right. I chance. just don't like because if you get a scar that's hypersensitive around the nipple areola, it's very bad. Uh -huh. I don't like scars under the breast because they may show. So yeah, an armpit scar, right. nobody cares about. Nobody cares. <laughs> How much does this cost? We should ask. Uh, it depends with you having uh, just an uh, an uplift, an uplift plus uh, uh, a uh, implant or just an implant. So it goes anywhere from uh, four, 3,500, 4,000, some places to 5,000. Depends mm -hmm. on where uh, you go to have it done. All right, now we have some before and after pictures, Jill, and, and this is uh, what could happen to you, and we hope right. it does. There is, uh, is that the before or the after? That's the before. You can't tell anymore. <laughs> That's the before. That's this the is before. a before on okay. a lady who had the saline implant done through the armpit. Right. There are no scars anywhere on the chest. Uh, uh, and uh, it's mainly under the armpit. You never see it. It's within the armpit area. Do you put, uh, put the patient to sleep, or is it done locally? Or? I like to put the patient to sleep. I think it would be very uncomfortable to have it done uh, under local. Cause so you're hospitalized. You come in in the morning, you have it done, and you go home the same day. All right. Okay. Now, that was the after picture? That was the after picture. Okay, so uh, is that good enough that for your beautiful perfect. hips? <laughs> that would be perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're all set now. You're going to have this operation done when? I go Thursday, St. Patrick's Day, and I go on Monday. On uh, next Monday? This coming Monday. This coming Monday. So I'll be two days before we come back. Wow, that's going to be quick, but we'll see you here next Wednesday. Wednesday, right? great. All right, very all good, right. Doctor. Good luck. Thank you very much for being here. Jill, good luck. All the best. I'll be back in just a moment.